106 KMEL. It's 106 KML, the base number one for hip hop and R&B. Like I'm really excited today, you know what I mean? Because one of my heroes growing up is in the building right now, so I definitely gotta give you a big shout out. Sergeant Slaughter's in this thing. What's going on? Uh, Ted Hunt. <laughs> I'm Yo. doing good, great. Carry on. I uh, just en- enjoying uh, being in uh, the San Francisco area once again, and and uh, running by some of my favorite spots. You know what's really awesome uh, for me and I'm pretty sure a lot of people who grew up in the 80s and the 90s like me, uh, is I remember watching you not only, you know, being a wrestler, you know, and, and you know, you fought Hogan a couple times right. at WrestleMania. Yep. You know, of course, a champion multiple times over. But my thing was G.I. Joe. Yo, Joe! <laughs> <laughs> like, that was absolutely awesome to me yeah. to see, you know, your character translate into a cartoon. Like, right. did that... You know, because you were all already big, you know, and right. in, in what was then WWF is now WWE. Right. But, you know, did that kind of take you to a bigger, yes. like, you know, yes. way of recognition and all of that right. being in the it cartoon? Pu- it put me in a different, uh, you know, uh, age uh, place where, right. you know, the uh, boys and girls that, that watched G.I. Joe all of a sudden saw uh, a wrestler, a real live character become part of the uh, storyline and uh this is the 30th year that i joined uh gi joe wow so we're hoping they're going to do some type of a little uh, action figure with uh, maybe <laughs> red, white and blue with some camouflage on it and and uh but yeah it, it uh it was quite at the time it didn't really sink into me mm-hmm. because uh, i was so busy doing everything else but uh now when i look back and think that i'm the you know, I'm Sergeant Slaughter, the only living GI Joe, right? And uh, and wrestling uh, WWE, and uh, no one else can claim that fame, you know, right? I'm the only one. Okay, dope. So yeah. I, as far as now you know, and knowing <laughs> half the battle, GI <laughs> Joe. That's awesome. As far as I know, like the the feuds that you've been in in the past. Of course, I mentioned uh, Hulk Hogan, who oh, yeah. was here not too long ago, and then also um, you know Nikolai Volkov and yeah. all that. What was your favorite feud, you know, uh, personally, like that you really, you know, feel attached to as far as your wrestling uh, career? I've had quite a few of them. Uh, You know, Pat Patterson way back uh, in the beginning with uh, the alley fights and and, uh, the Cobra Clutch Challenge. Right. And uh, uh, going back. Further uh, down the line, having uh, the Iron Iron Sheik, Iron Sheik, yeah, going after him, and you know nobody ever really got to uh, punch Ayatollah in the nose. <laughs> so when I came back from my second tour of duty with the WWE, I suggested you know the Vince McMahon's father was still running the company. Right. He says, Sarge, it's so good to have you back. You know you're the best villain ever in the business, and and so I said, well, if you think I'm a good villain, you should see me as a hero. And yeah. Said, what are you talking about? And I explained to him, you know, you got the Iron. Sheik, Sheik, uh, Iran, the overtake of, you know, the embassy and all the killings of the Marines and the, the hostage situation and the Blackhawks. And I said, why don't you let me punch Ayatollah in the nose through Iron <laughs> Sheik? He, he didn't like that idea. Uh, yeah. He said, no, no, you're you're the best villain. And, and Vince, uh, our boss of today, mm-hmm. leaned over and said, I love the idea. Don't worry about Pops. I'll, I'll talk to him about it. And about two Three weeks later at uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania, he came to me. It was almost the last thing we did. We were doing three tapings uh, at that time uh, in one night, and he he just came in the locker room. He was doing the play-by-play, and said, are you ready? I said, ready for what? He goes, go against the Iron Sheik. I yeah. said, yeah. He said, go out there and give me your best uh, uh, General Patton-type promo. And I said, okay. So on the fly, I, I went out there and ended up doing the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag and declaring war on uh, the Iron Sheik. And the rest kind of is history. Uh, of the seven presidents that I've met uh, so far, uh, three of them said they saw the match wow. and did the Pledge of Allegiance with me when I did it. So uh, it, it's uh, you never know who your audience is. And, and uh, it, it really propelled uh, me to get into G.I. Joe because that was, you know, absolutely. G.I. It made you the yeah, it made you the hero. It made you very, hero. very G.I. Joe. Yes. I went from um, the most hated guy to the most popular in <laughs> in, in twenty minutes. Yeah. You know? As far as uh, I think a lot of people may not know necessarily, like you're not you're not Sergeant Slaughter because 
you just decided one day right. like oh yeah i'm gonna just pick up this right. thing right. you're sergeant slaughter because you're actually right. right you you've had military experience right. right and uh you know when i first got into the uh, professional wrestling business i i didn't even think about using that character i was you know i was beautiful bobby <laughs> yeah uh, kind of uh, my one of my favorite wrestlers was superstar billy graham yeah of course and so i had the tie-dyed and the blonde blonde hair and <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I called myself Beautiful Bobby, and, and uh, I was very, very uncomfortable. Yeah, that didn't really work out for you too much, me. huh? It wasn't me. So uh, one day I came home uh, after uh, quitting the business and was helping my father with a, in a roofing business, and we, it rained, so mm-hmm. we had to go home. So I, as soon as I came to the house, I turned on the TV, and uh, we didn't have remotes back then. So <laughs> uh, as soon as I turned the TV on, black and white, here comes the, I hear the Marine Corps hymn, and I look, and it's a movie called uh, The D. With Jack Webb, yeah, black and white, and uh, I just started watching, it and I said, "That's a great character for being a professional wrestling villain," you know. Right. And so I watched the uh, the movie, went down to my locker box, and pulled out my uh, campaign cover, and and uh, got my swagger stick out. When my <laughs> wife got home from uh, from work, I had her take a disposable camera, take some pictures of me, and growling and being bad, and uh, I took him over to a, a wrestling office, uh, Vern Gagne's wrestling office, uh, got a new character, and he was a Marine, and uh, he started emulating his drill instructor, who he hated. <laughs> he says, I love the idea. You gotta go, you gotta go do it. You can't do it here, but how about Kansas City? And uh, I said, uh, I'm ready, I'm ready. So And just kind of took how, off from uh, there. It was in 1975. Wow. At a 76 that I started doing Sergeant Slaughter, yeah. Nice. So, WrestleMania, yeah. of course, is coming up, which, if you know, you guys are, are super pumping, and I'm yeah. pumped about for it to be in oh, the Bay Area, absolutely. Yeah. Um, how many WrestleManias have you been a part of? Everyone but uh, the first six, because when I left uh, WWE, I couldn't be a part of uh, WWE to be in Hasbro right. and be G.I. Joe, so uh, Vince McMahon gave me uh, kind of an ultimatum. You could either be with us or be with them, and I figured I could always be a wrestler, Yeah, whether it w- if it was with WWE or not, but uh, I wanted to be with WWE. Right. But I chose to go uh, with the Hasbro, and uh, so I missed the first uh, six WrestleManias, but I've been there ever since. Okay. And here we are at WrestleMania 31 in uh, Levi Stadium. Uh, it's going to be uh, just an awesome uh, display of uh, technic. Uh, you know, it's hard to explain unless you've been to one. Right. And uh, the last time we had one, uh, uh, WrestleMania here was Anaheim. Yeah. One before that was uh, in L.A. with Hogan and I, uh, main eventing. And, uh, of course, we were supposed to go outdoors on that uh, WrestleMania, but uh, because of the security, uh, all the death threats and bomb threats on me and, and everything with that. Wow, really? Uh, because of the character. because of the theme of what was going right, on right, right now, everybody took right. it, or then, everybody yeah. took it really oh, seriously. Yeah, they were, they were serious. That's crazy. Yeah, you know, I got stabbed uh, four times. Really? shot at, and I had to uh, wear a bulletproof vest. Wow. Had to go through, uh, when I didn't go through the airports, I'd walk down the side of the plane and have an escort to my hotels and to the arenas and yeah it was a real real tough time back then and, Jeez. and uh, so uh it, we were supposed to go to uh the coliseum and do, do a hundred and four thousand seat uh venue but uh, because of uh, the security as i said they told uh, vince he'd have to put about four or five million dollars into securing the building wow. he didn't want to do that he hadn't he didn't, you know hardly sold the ticket yet right i mean it was a hot item it was going to sell out but we ended, ended up going indoors but uh, that was the only you know downside of it because you know you work so hard and did went through all that uh that you know goes with it and you didn't get a chance to break that record and, right and uh but uh, but you guys still ended up having a classic match oh, yeah. like that's always yeah. you know a yeah. match that folks look back on as like if you're going to talk about you know uh sports entertainment professional right. wrestling right. that that's a benchmark Right. Well, uh, people tell me to this day that that was the greatest match that Hulk Hogan ever had. And, mm. uh, you know, I, I pat myself on the back. Because, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a ring general, and I can, you know, kind of 
basically controlled that match. And, right. And, uh, you know, he even take, uh, came off the top rope and I slammed him. <laughs> I don't think he'd ever been above the second rope. So uh, it was quite a uh, display uh, for for uh, anybody that was a professional wrestling fan or a WWE fan at that time. One last question before we get out of here, Sarge. Before you get a Cobra Clutch, you mean? Uh, you know what? I, okay. would, I, I was actually here. This, that's a part of the question. I was actually wondering if you could put Max in a Cobra Clutch because he can. really needs it. He's I been can. on my head all day. So he might have to get a you picture of that. For you, I'm going to do it for free. <laughs> <laughs> Sergeant Slaughter here, right here on 106 KMEL. I appreciate you, man, for coming Thank by. You. Thank you. No push-ups for you. <laughs>